some more views from the mentally ill. Um, I'm, I'm halfway through this week's question time and I've already had to turn it off due to absolute fucking apoplectic rage. Of people who don't understand the basics of how the political process works. Um, I don't believe in everything Donald Trump says. I think the guy is a misogynistic borderline racist. I do... I do understand why people think that. However, a really interesting point about the uh, Muslim ban, okay? That's only 90 days. But let's not forget, this was something that President Obama started. He implemented um, an extreme level of vetting for these specific countries that, that all of you fucking lefty liberals seem to be ignoring. All Trump has said is, okay, let's... Have a pause. Let's make sure this vetting process is right because he has a democratic responsibility to protect the American people. Okay? Now, you will get certain people, again, on the liberal left who are saying, oh, but hang on a minute, you know, these countries are responsible for 7% of direct terrorist aggression towards America. That's correct. It's just under 7%, actually. Um, but... If you look at it globally, it's a bigger figure. These are, apart from Iran, war-torn, destabilised countries who have been linked to direct terrorist action in other parts of the world. Confirmation bias is something that's used extensively within um, politics. It's, it's just how it's done. There's been the, 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 the atrocious uh, attack on the six Muslims who were engaging in their religious right in Quebec have been brutally murdered. Yet there are people in this country tying that directly to Trump's Muslim ban. That is fucking wrong. We don't we have no evidence of that. No evidence of that whatsoever. This is the problem. I voted to exit the European Union. I did so, and please, anybody on my Facebook, you speak to my wife. She'll tell you, I spent 18 months, two years researching everything. I had stacks of paper like this on uh, economic trends, on immigration trends, on manufacturing trends, on EU funding. Not just into the UK, but how it was spread out, okay? I researched everything. I looked at the round table of industrialists. I looked at lobbying. I looked at how the lobbying industry in Brussels is second only behind Washington. Now, if you can't get what that means, if you can't understand how companies like Volvo and Philips basically turn around to the European Union and say, you either fucking pass this, you either go in our direction, or we take our manufacturing facilities out of Europe. Whether they're going to fucking concede on that, that, that threat or follow through with it is irrelevant. The fact of the matter is the European Union crumbled every fucking time. So who's managing it? Who's controlling Europe? Because it's sure as shit aren't these unelected pricks sat in Brussels. Now in 1973, I totally think it was the right thing. You look at how the world was in the 70s. Having a, a, an economic trading blockade made perfect sense. Of course it did. But what people in this country didn't fucking vote for in 1973 was a non-bureaucratic, political, bloated leviathan that the European Union has become. Spain is bankrupt. Italy is bankrupt. Greece is bankrupt. You have Germany, a country that, let's not forget... On the morning that the Brexit vote was confirmed, you had the head of Mercedes, you had the head of BMW, and then you had the head of uh, VAG, all pressuring the German government to say, we need to get some form of pre-established trade agreement with the UK immediately. Why? Because the UK are the biggest importer of German vehicles of any other country in Europe. We are also the main route that... Germany get their vehicles to the US, their second biggest market. In fact, actually, America may be the primary market outside of the European blockade. 
Another thing that's kind of annoying me is this catastrophic Armageddon doom and gloom bullshit that the Remain campaign completely fed the media consistently with no fucking evidence. We currently have, I believe, 36 countries wanting to have um, isolated individual trade agreements with the UK once Article 50 has been triggered. They don't need the completion of the, the exit process. Once Article 50 has been triggered, they wish those negotiations to begin. That's more countries than we currently have within the European trade uh, of the single market process as, it, as per se it is right now. Also, that doesn't include the countries like Germany, like Holland, like Belgium, uh, like Spain, Italy and Greece, who we do a lot of trading with. They're not stupid. What people need to realise is we hold the negotiating cards. There's a, 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 a Canadian economist has done a fantastic uh, a piece in one of the, the Canadian newspapers that will eventually, I should imagine, go, go global as other newspapers pick it up. He's done a fantastic study on comparing Canada and America and South American trade against what the UK get out of Europe. And if done progressively with a pragmatic approach to the economic systems, will be worth two to three times what we trade out of Europe. And we will still be able to trade with Europe. This is the fucking thing. There are countries not in the European Union who are in the single market. Personally, I want Brexit to mean Brexit. And I did that purely from an economic viewpoint. Because long term, it will be more beneficial. This, this, this keeping yourself in this little European garden almost reflects, ironically, that kind of little Englander attitude. If, well, we'll stay in this little bit. This is OK. We'll, we'll stay here. Mm. We don't live in the world that we did in 1970. We don't live in the world that we lived in 1980s. We don't live in the world that we did in the 1990s. We now have a global economy where there are a huge amount of countries that, that were, were probably very much developing nations when, when the European Union kind of was in its birthing period. We've got China, we have the Far East, we've got the developing markets in South America, um, and we have now a US president who, yeah, I, I get why people find him divisive, I get why people are easily swayed by, by what's in the media, but if you actually... Do your fucking research and look very carefully at probably at least 60 to 70% of the stories that were put out about Trump during the election campaign. So much of it was manipulated by the liberal left media in America. I'm not saying Donald Trump's perfect, but the fact of the matter is, he's fucking president. Fucking stop your whining, get on with it. That's how it is. I actually believe somebody that is not part of the political establishment, who has not... Can't, no, who can't be considered a, a, a career politician, because he's not, and somebody that has kiss, consistently said, I am not going to continue down the traditional political establishment route. And he's already proved to do that. And do you know what really fucking pisses me off? What really gets my fucking goat? Where's, where, where, where's the media? The global media? Where are they on um, the taxation bill that he's drafted up? It is... A phenomenal piece of legislation that is going to benefit millions and millions of working Americans. But why aren't the media fucking putting that out? Because it's easier to criticise Trump and call him a fucking racist because he's banned fucking Muslims. That's not what he's done. He said, for 90 days, I want to review what Barack Obama started. But you see, again, the liberal America, the liberal, uh, liberal American left media aren't going to tell you that aspect. They're just going to say, Trump's banned Muslims, he's a fucking racist. I'm not saying that there isn't an element that makes me feel uncomfortable from a racial, ethical perspective. But know the fucking facts. Obama started this. Not Trump. All Trump is saying, OK, we have this very tight vetting process I want to protect the American people, so let's just pause for a minute, for 90 days. Let's make sure we've got it right. Let, and he also said, let's make sure we've got it right so it's fair for everybody. 